in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all ready to hook up tonight? Turn over to Acts chapter 10. That's our text scripture tonight. We're going to start over there. I'll give you the title in just a moment. But I want to start off reading Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I'll start it off in the King James Version. We need one more Bible up front right here. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says, let's read it all together. Verse 38, starting and read. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Well, we got all different translations or something. All right. Amen. It's all good. All right. The Bible says here how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With who? With the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. And with power, who went about doing what? He went about doing what? What does it say? Yes, thank you. Y'all with me tonight. All right. Who went about doing good and healing all that were what? Oppressed of who? For God was what? Was with him. Praise God. I'm going to read that from the Amplified Bible. It says, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth. Now, I want to point something out to you. First, we see here that God did two things. He anointed him and he consecrated him. Now, the word anointed right there, I'm going to break it down to you like this for those that's taking notes. When, when God anoints you, it's like he's taking his super and putting it on your natural. So that gives you supernatural ability. So I want you to know that if you tap into God, spend time with God, spend time in his word, pray, study the word of God, God will anoint you. God will take his super and put it on your natural, praise God. So you can go from, let's just say, for example, oh, you've been studying that exam, you've been studying for that exam and you're getting ready and, and you're preparing, but you've done everything you need to do in the natural. But I, I want to submit to you tonight that if you allow God to take part in that, he can put his super on your natural. So now you can tap, tap into the scripture in John where it says that he'll bring all things to your remembrance. Praise God. When I was in college and I was studying for an exam, that was one of my scriptures. I used to confess God will bring all things to our, my remembrance. Praise God. I'm going to show you that real quick. Keep a finger right there and let's turn to John chapter 14. I hope you brought your, fa your finger turning page tonight. Praise God, because we're going to hit a few scriptures up tonight. John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, but the comforter, which is who? The Holy Ghost. Praise God. Okay. What I need y'all to do is start practicing what these books are. Y'all got to start reading your Bible more. Amen. Or, or get you some tabs like I got. That's how I cheat. Praise God. You know, you know what I'm saying? You got to get your cheat on with the Bible. Amen. Amen. No. Cheat sheet. Praise God. Get you some tabs. Amen. Look, look. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, but the comforter. Oh, see, the Holy Ghost is considered the comforter. When your day ain't going that well and you need somebody to lay your, you need somebody to lay your, you need to lay your head on somebody's shoulders, you can lay your head on the Holy Ghost. Which, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name. He shall what? Teach you all things and what? Bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You see, the Bible is saying he will not only teach you all things, but he'll bring all things to your remembrance. He'll bring the word to your remembrance. And I believe that if you study your schoolwork, he'll bring that to your remembrance. When that exam comes, if you put it in you, you'll be able to get it up out of you. Amen. Just a little something, something for you tonight. Back in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. So God wants to anoint you. If you want to be anointed by God and tap into what he has in store for you, get some of his super, super on your natural. So now you can have supernatural ability. You need to spend time with him. Can I get an amen? amen? And then it says, and he consecrated Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, see, consecrated, that means to be set apart. It means to be set apart for something special. When you birthed into this earth, God didn't, you wasn't just here, you wasn't a mistake. You wasn't because, you know, Somebody, two people got together and, you know, and there you are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tweaking on your daddy's eye. No, you wasn't a mistake, praise God. Listen, it was by design, glory to God. I don't care what they have said to you. It was the will of God that you came into this earth. 
I said it was the will of God that you came into this earth. But God says he wants to consecrate you. He wants to set you apart for his special service, for his work. And he says here, he anointed, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Amplified says. See, I'm reading from the Amplified. So, so when you're consecrated, that means you don't, when you're consecrated and set apart for God's special service, that don't mean you're walking around trying to look like everybody else, trying to talk like everybody else, trying to act like everybody else, trying to have everything everybody else got. Why? Because you're, 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 you're God's special favorite person. When the Bible says you are a chosen generation, that word chosen right there in a, in a literal Greek means you are God's favorite generation. Oh, my goodness. Anybody ever told you my favorite? Don't that make you feel special? You should feel special because God says you're his favorite. He not only anointed you for the task he's placed you on this earth, he's also set you apart for a special work. Now, watch here. It says with strength and ability and power, the Amplified says. So God, he just didn't put you out here on your own. He's given you strength, ability, and and power. It goes on to say how he went about doing good and in particular curing, curing all those who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil for God was with him. Let me say this tonight. Some of you, you think you're just having a bad day just because you're having a bad day. You better recognize that is harassment of the devil. The devil don't want you to walk in joy. The devil don't want you to walk in victory. He's harassing you. He's trying to get you all sick, moping around, tired, and discouraged. That's harassment of the devil. But if you tap into what Holy Ghost got for you, you won't be harassed anymore. How many of you ever heard of swag? Swag. Are you walking in swag tonight? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. You ever thought about what that means? What does swag mean to you? Talk to me tonight. Your personality, what? Your style, what else? The way you carry yourself, what else? The way you walk, what else? The way you talk, how you walk. Listen, listen. Definition of swag, it's not about what you possess. It's not about your car. It's not about your clothes. It's not about your house. It's not about your possessions. It's how you carry yourself. I'm going to give you a definition of swag. The definition of swag is this, appearance or style, the way you present or carry yourself. Oh, I like this part. It's your overall confidence, style or demeanor. So tonight's title of this message is Holy Ghost Swag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said you got to tap in tonight. Because I want to minister on Holy Ghost swag. Hold on, Miss Joan. What swag and Jesus got to do with one another? You know what I mean? what, what, what? All right, let me show you. Let me show you. Turn over to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, that's back there by Revelations. First one, get there. I got a trip for you to IHOP. Praise God. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm there, so I'll take myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm already there, so well. First John chapter four. Minister Jones, how is Jesus and swag connected? Well, I want to submit to you tonight that if the definition of swag is appearance, style or the way you present or carry yourself, it's your overall confidence. Then the Bible says here in first John chapter four, verse four. Because we got to understand how this is connected here. How is Jesus and swag connected? Verse 4, it says, ye are of God. Okay, ye are of God. Let's stop right there. First of all, if you want to walk in confidence, you got to know who you belong to. Can I get an amen? All right, you're not going to walk in confidence if you don't understand. Listen, even if you belong to God, if you don't have a revelation of it, and if you're not studying to understand God more and to fellowship with God more, and, and when something goes on, and, and let's just say somebody made you mad. Let's say a parent. Can I get an amen? amen. And if you don't go to the worst, I'm so frustrated. I'm so mad. <laughs> I'll just tear stuff up in your room. 
and you don't go and you don't go to God and say, God, I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I need you to show you show 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 me in the word so I can get over this. God is like, this is what I need you to do. I want you to go to the word. I want you to find out what it says so you can get over that frustration. Because you might be dealing with some things and, so, and you feel some people coming against you and you're like, man. I, I, so, so I want to submit to you like this. Some of you need to walk in more swag. I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you like this. I had somebody persecuting me one time. Mm-hmm. What do you mean persecute? They was dogging me, y'all. Come on. Now they, was doing, they was talking about me, saying little smart comments. Because, you know, I, I, my personality, I'm kind of laid back. I don't say much, believe it or not. <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, there are some people in the world that would try to take advantage of that. In other words, don't take my kindness for weakness. Can I get an amen? And they were doing this, and I was so frustrated, y'all. I was mad. And I was, I was about to go to sleep one night. And I'm thinking about this because I knew I was going to have to deal with this the very next day. And the Holy Spirit said this to me. He says, you need some swag. And I was like, come on, God. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I was like, that's for the young people. He was like, you need some swag. You need to walk in some swag. I was like, I don't even know what that is. He was like, well, look it up. So I go, I jump on the computer. I pull it up. And I look at one of the definitions. Don't make me call you out. I'm looking at one of the definitions. And the definition for swag is this. Appearance, style, the way you present or carry yourself. It's your overall confidence, style, or demeanor. And I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe because I haven't been carrying myself in a confident way, those that are being used of the devil, let's keep it real, are attacking me. So the revelation I got laying there that night was maybe I need to get my confidence built up so I can carry myself a certain way since they want to try to take advantage of my kindness, right? And I'm thinking confidence. Swag means confidence? Hold on. Swag means confidence? How many of you ever won a game or won something? You get a, you be like, yeah, you know, like what? You know, that only lasts so long, but you're like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know I got a lot of athletes in here. You ever won a game? You want you be geeked in the mud. You be like, yeah. You be like, what's up? And then that next game, y'all get smashed. You be like, oh, man. I was reading something in a book, and I think it was, oh, it was some school back in 1916. This school was very, it was, it was a story I was reading. This school was very good. At, their football team was very, very good. And they were playing another team. And the, the team that was getting smashed on, uh, the quarterback got mad at the running back and said, pick up the ball, pick up the ball, or something like that. And the running back, this is the team that was losing real bad. And the running back looked at, looked at the quarterback and was like, you pick it up, you dropped it. That's just how bad they was getting beat. <laughs> so, so the final score of the game was 222 to zero. <laughs> it was. It was. That, that's, what, that's what the book said. That's what the book said. That's like real bad. That's like no defense, just, you know, just running through them. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, imagine where their confidence was. You get beat 222 to zero. All right. Now, this is the thing, though. How many of you are letting the devil beat you 222 to zero? Every single day, you decide not to pray. You decide not to read your Bible. You decide not to act on the word that God has placed in your hand. The Bible is God's basic instructions before leaving earth. So if you don't get some basic instructions on how to walk in this life and how to be successful and victorious in this life, then you are bound to be defeated. But we're going to change that tonight. Amen. Because we're about to tap into some Holy Ghost swag. 